Um, yeah, this is a recent book uh, last year. Uh, and I, can't, I, I always wanted to collaborate with Maria Gillen because Maria Gillen is a, is a very famous Patterson poet, New Jersey poet, who's published over 20 books. And uh, her poems, especially her Patterson poems, sort of resonate with my photographs because I've been a, f a photographer for many years photographing Patterson. And, um, and so I wanted to have a book of her poems, her Patterson poems and my Patterson photographs. So we collaborated on this beautiful book and um, it, it was a labor of love. And uh, so I was, I was very happy to, to finally be able to, to do this and um, put the photographs together with her poems. Um, and it worked out, really did, because she's very visual in her poetry. And uh, the places that she remembers in her poems are very alive, very vivid. Because Maria is someone who's very present in her work. And when she reads her poems, you can feel that presence. And um, I I've learned a lot from her over the years. And her poetry has taught me something. You know, it's, it's helped my photography as well. Um, and I'm, I'm very visual. And, and so poetry, you know, which uses imagery, uh, and I think it really is a, f you know, photography and poetry are very close in that sense. Um, and I think there's a, there's a symbiotic relationship that goes on between the two of them. And I think also because uh, poetry deals with time and photography is also dealing with time. Um, photography, on, in, one, in one sense, is a time exposure. And so whenever we deal with time, there's a melancholy, um, there's a melancholy sense to photog all photography because what you're photographing is always the past. And when you're looking at it, you're looking at something from the past and you're in the present and you can never relive the past. And so poetry can can time travel. Poetry is this, this art form that also is, a, as Dylan Thomas said, is the, you know, my sullen craft that has that kind of melancholy as well because it's also dealing with time and uh, the way a photograph deals with time. Uh, it's a very, very strange thing philosophically. But, um, so I, I think those two arts, uh, those art forms are, are perfectly matched. Um, you know, so. This is a poem I wrote um, when my father died. And it's a photograph that I used to go with it. it was a photograph of the Passaic River uh, by Kennedy High School. And it was a foggy day in January, a beautiful foggy day. The fog was so beautiful, I actually had to call in sick because um, I was supposed to be at work that day. But often what happens is when there's a beautiful fog, and I love to photograph fog, I'll just you know, go out and cancel whatever I have to do just to go out and make those photographs. And this was in the morning. And so it looked like one of those Japanese uh, paintings, uh, those inkbrush paintings. And this is Patterson. And yet you've got this, you're close to nature. And my father, you know, when he died, um, he died in the middle of a snowstorm. And, um, and so I, I thought about that, and I thought that was an interesting way of, uh, you know, his, his spirit, his, his, uh, his soul got, that swept up in that, that's, in that weather event, that storm, that that's snow. And uh, so I called the poem Moisture. I can still hear the phone ring, then silence, then the phone again. I'm up and out of bed at 5 a.m. My brother on the other end. Dad passed away. I can still see my brother in the lobby waiting for me. I can still see my father's body. Pale, gray, wooden. It's a strange kind of birth, being born out of the body. That cold, eerie stillness. I am snowed in. It snowed all night, snowed all morning, all day into evening. My father made it snow. His spirit in the upper atmosphere got swept up in a storm. 
There is a Hopi legend that the spirit returns as moisture, and now he's snowing all around me, his spirit melting into the cold air, melting into the earth, into s snowflakes, melting into streams, melting into underground rivers.